In this session, we discuss creating an optimized blog post in WordPress. Now, in previous sessions, we talked about formatting your content using WordPress. We talked about embedding images and embedding links. And we talked about the anatomy of a blog post and all these kind of main areas here that help you create your blog post. Today we're going to take all of those ideas and combine them to create an optimized blog post. Now, what I mean by an optimized blog post is that we have created our content and from that content we have pulled out what we consider the very best key terms for that content. So by creating those key terms, we can use them in very strategic ways to make certain that they get, our, or our post gets the very best placement in search engines and also search directories like blog directories and RSS feed directories. So remember that I said I create my content and I pull my key terms out of a content. This is really important to what makes your blog post relevant and for search engines and for search directories. As opposed to coming up with your keywords and embedding them in the content, you want to be thinking about pulling your best key terms out of your content because you've created your content naturally and that's actually the best way to get exposure today on the internet. So using the post that I've written here, which is a five tips to get more exposure for your RSS reader blog, I have pulled out what I consider the best key terms for this particular post based on how I think people would be entering key terms and have the best chance of actually finding my post. And I put those key terms down here in a document. So based on those key terms, I'm going to do a number of things. First of all, when I create my title, I'm going to make certain that I have some of those key terms in the title itself. Okay, we're moving down. We look at our permalink. Remember that a permalink is your permanent link to your post. Now, if you have a really long title like this, you might consider editing your permalink so that it's not quite as long. But you also want to make certain that it's descriptive enough. Okay, so optimizing the main body of a content area of my post. One of the things that I'm going to pay very special attention to is how I actually highlight text that is going to be linked to other sources. When I highlight text, like this link here that's been highlighted and is now linking to another source, or this one here, I'm going to be careful that I actually use as many of my key terms in those areas as I can. For instance, some of my key terms include feed burner, RSS feed directories, subscribing to blogs, subscriptions, email subscriptions, blog optimization. And so I'm highlighting things like when I want to link to FeedBurner's email subscription help page, I highlight this entire phrase, FeedBurner's email subscription feature here. So when I click open this link, I'm, I am linking this to this page, this page being very relevant to that particular bit of text that I've highlighted and linked to it. These are all things that are very important to getting the good search placement that, that we're seeking. Now we're going to go ahead and do one. I'm going to demonstrate one of those links for you right here. What I want to do is link this phrase right here, claim your blog on Technorati, and I want to link that to one of the videos in this series, actually, that's called Claiming Your Blog in Technorati. Now recall that when we embed videos, we want to, or when we're looking for the link of a video, we want to go to that video and click right here. And that will actually show the direct link to that video. Now I'm not embedding this video, I just want to link to it. And so I copy that and I come back and then I want to paste it in this area. And then here's something else that's very important, again, for search placement, but also for the navigation of, of your readers, is that you want to have a very descriptive title in here. And you want it to be relevant using the same types of key terms that the link text is here, and then also that the source is that you're actually linking to. Because your outgoing links are 
can be really, really important to getting that good placement, just as important as your incoming links, especially if they're relevant. So then we click Insert, and now we have a link to that video using very specific key terms. And then again, we when we link to the Technorati directory here, we highlight both these words, Technorati directory, and that's how we link out to that. And then finally, in our fifth point here, we're talking about making certain that you're adding your feed to many feed directories. And then we say check top rank for the most popular blog and RSS feed directories. Again, this, this text including a lot of our keywords. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to add was an image. I have an image that I've inserted here and an image I've inserted here. I want to place one more image in here. And remember that when we, when we insert an image into a blog post, we go up here to Upload Insert, click on Add an Image. We can upload it from our computer or we can link to a direct URL, but I've already added this particular image to the media library. So we can just grab it. It's the Technorati logo. I'm going to show that. I'm going to make certain that it has a title. I'm going to make certain that it has alternate text. Those two things are very important. And I'm not going to worry about the link URL because what I want to show you is how we're going to link directly from that image within the body of the post. I do want it to be right aligned. And now that all of these things are set, I can go ahead and click Insert into Post. And here's my image over here. Now when I click on that image, I can override where it links to by clicking right here on this little link, the same way that we would link text. So I want this to go to the Technorati website directly. I always include a title and I click Update. Now let's go ahead and preview our post and see if we want to change anything as far as the formatting is concerned. But one of the things that I notice is that these images here are awfully close together and that I really would prefer for this to be a little bit larger. Now remember, all we have need to do is highlight our text and we can change, we can format it however we like, especially with these styles right here. We highlight text and we can click on a different style and this will give, should give our post a very different look and feel. Okay, now we have our image up here that, that implies this is about RSS feeds. Then we have a header, and then it goes on into our, into our numbered list, which does look better. And then also I would prefer to give my final sentence some bold text so that it definitely sets it aside or apart from the numbered list. And that's all I'm going to do as far as formatting because I've already highlighted my best key terms and I have them um, exporting out to sources. Now when we go down here to excerpt, we want to make certain that the, our excerpt describes what our blog post is about, which this one does, as opposed to the first, say, sentence of our, of our post. Remember, if we don't include an excerpt, it's going to grab the first 55 to 100 characters of the post. And this was kind of a lead-in sentence here, so I preferred to put a more descriptive sentence in my excerpt. Okay, now I want to move over to Categories and Tags. Again, we want to keep our key terms in mind when we, when we look at tags. But as far as our categories are concerned, remember that categories are more are ways that you can organize your blog posts in a broader sense. So we don't want to be thinking about key terms here. We just want to be thinking about organizing the blogs to make it easier for our readers. And so I have blogging, a feed burner, RSS feeds, and social media tools uh, selected here as categories, but I notice that I don't have a category called Technorati, and I do use that one a lot, so I think I prefer to add it. So I can do that right on the fly, and when I do add that category, it's automatically going to be included up here as a category for this post. 
Okay, now we want to, when we include our tags, this is why we want to be very, very mindful that these are where the key terms are going to go. These are the ways in which we're going to tag the post information so that it's easy for people to find in the search engines. And that's why I saved all of these key terms here that I pulled out from the body of a text or the body of the post. I'm going to copy those and paste them right in this post tags area. And then I can click on add. Now another thing you can do is, especially if you have a lot of blog posts, you can click on this area here which says choose from the most used tags. And a lot of times you can just select your tags right from this area. Uh, the ones that are used the most of course are bigger ones, that's what a tag cloud does. So something that's used more is in bigger text than things that are used less. And then finally, we can set the featured image of this post. So that when it shows up in the directories, it's always going to have this image, say, to the left of it in the directories that allow it. And so here we open it up just as though we would, were going to insert it into the post. But this time we select it as use as featured image. And we also want to make certain that it's a small thumbnail and then we can close that. So now that we have an optimized blog post, we are ready to publish it. That concludes our session today.